Drilling the boilers for exhaust inlet pipes. Boiler works part 17. Underneath the front of the Stuart 500 series boilers is an area that needs drilling to take the exhaust outlet. The boilers were already painted, so I used a simple method to drill the holes that would not mark the existing paint. In this clip you can clearly see the shaped part underneath the chimney casting. If you've been watching the series you will know that one of the boilers is a 504 and the other two are 501s, and it's the 501s that aren't drilled. The exhaust outlet from one of the engines went into the side of the chimney into a drilled hole, and that chimney was a bit too long, so I shortened it as shown in a previous episode. Now I have standard 501 chimneys. To show the difference, here is a 504 chimney, and that's been already drilled. Can you see the hole? It's a quarter of an inch diameter for quarter pipe. I need to drill these holes in the 501s to take 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe. And as I don't want to damage the paint, I'm not going to risk putting them in the drilling machine. And that would be very easy to do. The drilling machine chuck, for instance, would actually foul the metal plate part. So instead, I'm going to use one of my Proxon motor tools. The problem is, these motor tools, which really are very good, are fitted with chucks which have a maximum capacity of 7 64 of an inch, or the metric equivalent. I haven't marked this out, I'm doing it once again by eye, and I think I've got it in the right place. The good thing about drilling small holes is, if the hole is not in the right place, I can use a needle file to move it into the correct place and then drill it out a bit bigger. But I'm not going to do that. Here is one of my sets of Imperial drill bits. It's quite a good set. And the first drill bit I'm going to select is 3 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. In this clip, the drill bit looks a bit on the large side, but that's because it's a magnified image. It's better to drill cast iron fairly slowly, but with these mini drills I can't really do that. I can slow them down, but there's no power. I'm drilling at a high speed, but putting plenty of pressure on the drill itself. This actually works quite well, it slows the drill bit down to the right speed to cut cast iron. The problem is, the drill doesn't like it. And if you overdo this, the drill switches off and then you have to switch it off and turn it back on again. Another thing that can go wrong is the battery can go flat. The worst thing I've ever done to one of these drills is to overload it so much that it melted the electronic circuitry. Although I did fix it in the end. With the first hole drilled, it's time to change the drill bit. For this second pass, I'm using a 764 drill. And because the hole is already present, this cuts a lot better. You can see all the chippings flying off. All these chippings are landing on the piece of cardboard that I rested the boiler on, and they need moving out of the way very frequently, because I do not want to risk scratching the boiler casing. Here, I'm drilling the hole a little bit bigger using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill. The good thing about doing it this way, although there is another method that I could mention, making a jig and drilling it from the top in one go, but because of the angle inside this chimney holder, I was a bit worried about the drill bit wandering and coming out in the wrong place. Besides, from experience, because I've done this before, this method seems to be a good way of doing it. Once I drilled the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole, I then used my small Bosch electric drill to open up the hole to 3 16 of an inch in diameter. This will take the 3 16 pipe. The main thing is, the hole is in the correct place. Or at least I think it is, it's in the same position relatively to the 504 boiler. And it really doesn't matter if it is slightly off because the copper pipe can be bent to go up the centre of the chimney. And in any case, this is only cosmetic. With the 3 16 of an inch diameter hole drilled in the first 501 boiler, in this clip I'm cleaning the parts using a kitchen towel. One down and one to go. What follows are edited highlights of the second 501 boiler. The process is exactly the same as you've just seen, so I'm not going to labour it. Everything's running at a higher speed, and in no time at all, I'm going through with the 1 8 of an inch diameter drill. And finally, as before, I use my Bosch drill with the 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill in it. 
and the 3 sixteenths of an inch twist drill makes short work of enlarging the hole. And once again, after doing this part of the job, I remove all the chippings because there are quite a lot now on the piece of cardboard. I want to finish this video showing a standard imperial drill bit set and as you can see they go from 1 16th right the way up to half an inch. I'm showing this so that viewers who write in saying what do you mean by two imperial sizes less is tapping size for ME threads. If you look at the set you can see a quarter of an inch diameter drill and two down from that is 7 30 seconds. So 730 seconds is generally the tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch, or quarter by 32 threads per inch. The tapping size for a 3 16 by 40 ME type thread would be 2 down, which is 532. When you look at charts, often it will give you a metric equivalent drill that often I don't have. So this is the method I've always used. And how do I know this? Well, I used to obsessively read the LBSC articles in Model Engineer that were written in the 1940s and 1950s. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.